Well, here we have some adorable looking Cocker Spaniels. How did Cocker Spaniels come to be? By artificial selection is how they came to be. And so how did a breeder uh, take a dog that looked different than Cocker Spaniels, not maybe one breeder, but over a period of time breeders took this particular variety of dog and ended up with a Cocker Spaniel. Well, they selected certain characteristics they wanted, of course. Uh, looks like a certain type of hair, long ears, etc. And they selected, just like we said, each generation exactly what they wanted. And so, select, 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 select. And why does it work? Well, here it is. Almost uh, completely on the board here. We're missing something. We're missing the rest of the sentence. What's happening? When the breeder selects the phenotype, oh yeah, what's the phenotype? Oh, what you can actually see. When the breeder's, for example, picking pointier ears, or maybe in the case of Cocker Spaniel, picking, uh, um, you know, long ears, it looks like. Uh, when a breeder is selecting a phenotype, what the breeder can see, what is the breeder selecting? He's selecting, we, all, we know what's going on here. He is selecting the alleles that produce that phenotype. When a breeder selects a phenotype, the breeder is selecting the alleles that produce that phenotype. It's that simple. And so how did the uh, Clydesdale horses, how did they uh, come into being? The breeder selecting alleles. The breeder saw bigger offspring, the breeder selected what he or she wanted. In the process, the breeder was selecting the alleles that produced large size. Now, uh, and that's why it works. Over generations, selecting, 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 you're selecting the alleles you want. Now, are there limits to this process? The Clydesdale horses, for example. Uh, is a breeder ever to get them two stories tall? I don't think so. At some point, you're going to do what? You're going to run out of alleles. Will a horse breeder ever get to have a horse breed horses down to this size? I don't think so. At some point, you're going to run out of small alleles. And that kind of brings me to the subject of the page that these little uh, cocker spaniels are on. It's in a little blue inset in your book. What's the title of uh, that little section, that little inset? It's the price of inbreeding. What does that mean? What is inbreeding? It means breeding with a close relative. Why would anybody do that? Well, when you're breeding a specialized type of dog, you haven't go, got a whole lot of choice. And why is that? Because anytime you're selecting certain alleles, selecting, 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 you're doing what with other alleles? Alleles. You're leaving them behind, are you not? Yes, you are. So by the time you get to this special breed, they're all about the same. There's not a whole lot of genetic variation in the gene pool of that particular breed. That is a problem. And what problem does it cause many of these breeds? Genetic problems of various kinds. Are all these dog, various dog breeds genetically healthy? No, some of you are probably familiar with some of the problems. Hip problems, eye problems, uh, various other kinds of joint problems, disposition problems, etc., etc. And why is that? Because of all the alleles they got left behind, that's why. And uh, what's the, uh, what do they call the uh, healthiest kind of dog? The mutt. What's a mutt? Heinz 57. A little bit of everything. A great variety of alleles within the uh, genome of that particular dog. And so, uh, do people ever get inbred? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And so, all it takes is what? Some type of isolation. Either living back in the hills and just making babies up in the hills, or perhaps uh, some type of ethnic or religious isolation to where you only make babies within a certain group. There are some religious groups, for example, that are inbred, and some of them know the problem now that they understand genetics better, and they're working to alleviate the problem, but it's caused them genetic problems, a problem of inbreeding. Anyway, uh, that wasn't exactly the question. That's just a little bit of a sign. The question is, why does artificial selection work? It's because when the breeder selects the phenotype, the breeder is selecting what? The alleles that produce the phenotype, and doing that generation after generation after generation, 
sends a breed off in a certain direction. Okay, that's it.